to the show as we get into the second half we're going to talk about top safety prospects what's out there and then we're going to also touch base on some of the safeties that i mean it's that we don't really feel as though this is a pretty deep safety draft but there are a few that stood out and right off the bat draft raw let's talk about mr xavier mckinney okay um can i segue on something real quick sure. right sure so in this draft of safeties mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of weird because I'm a free safety guy and I like safeties that have range and that can cover. So I was happy to know that a lot of these guys were kind of more rangy or cover type safeties. As I kept going through, I was personally getting mad mm -hmm. because one, I feel as though there's no strong safeties in this draft. And two, the tape started getting less and less right. better. So right. I just want to put that out there. What he said earlier, not being a deep safety class, this was pretty bad. I'll tell you, you're not <coughs> too far off because when I was watching the combine, you had Jamal Adams out there along with uh, Deion Sanders, and they were really just shooting these guys down. Just talking about their lack of mobility and uh, basically th their speed. They were really kind of disappointed. These guys were running slow 40s. Mm -hmm. A lot of linebackers out, out ran them. So let's get into it, though. What about McKinney? All right, so yes, Xavier McKinney from Alabama. <clears throat> Is he the best safety in this draft class? No. Um, and I don't – no disrespect to him, okay? Just point blank period, he's not the best one. Um there's a guy that's a little bit more. He's not underrated. He won't be under, but he's mm -hmm. a little bit more lesser known. But you would you know think his that name. He's gonna actually just outperform McKinney because McKinney has the name. Yeah, and McKinney a lot of guys are projecting him to go in the first and round. And he will. He probably will go in the first round because. And I know why. The versatility. Okay. He has free safety, strong safety mm -hmm. type abilities. Um, he can pretty much do everything, but not an elite level. It's okay. not any nothing that he does is elite, but he can tackle well. He covers well. He man to man covers well. His range is pretty good. Uh, it's like I said, it's everything that you can think of what a safety and what you want in it for a safety. The blitzing, all of that type of stuff. He can do it all. It's just none of it is at what I consider Top an level. elite. He's, Top level. he's just solid. He's yeah, solid. I think he's a real solid he's just safety. Solid. That he, he'll make, he'll make. He's coming out of Alabama, so yeah. he has the traits. He's yeah. got the techniques. Right. All right. How about Grant Delpit? LSU. Mm -hmm. LSU. That's all you guy. have to say. Um, <laughs> but then, once I say that, and then I read what I have in my paper, <laughs> it's going to be kind of uh, like, oh, that's not LSU. Uh, but um, he missed a lot of tackles. Yeah. A yeah, lot. You, you saw that in the championship game. You a actually lot. saw that in the championship game. A lot. Yeah. Ray. Mm. Ray. For a lot. Yeah, for free safety. Yeah. A lot. And that's bad. Because you missed that tackle and it's to the house. It's to the house. You missed that tackle in open field. Oh man. Right, I can't <laughs> it was a lot. Um he should uh, he played a lot of strong safety though, mm -hmm. which was out of position. Mm -hmm. I understand because he was a, he's an instinctive guy. Um, he's a six three guy, but strong safety is not what he should be playing. He's a free safety. Um, it wasn't the Ohio State game, but it was the I think it was the Clemson game, mm -hmm. the, the championship championship game. championship game. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I saw him play a little bit more free safety, mm -hmm. which I was encouraged about because it was like okay, I see something there. That he, that he has that wasn't used correctly during the season. Okay, so in the right system, being put in your proper position, he's someone that you think can excel yes. in the NFL. Like last year, or not last year, the year before Derwin James, mm -hmm. I thought straight up strong safety. Do not put that guy Peace. free. Peace. Do not put that guy free. The Chargers used him right, put him at, and kept him at strong safety. Yeah, and you and see you how see he performed. He's a beast. Mm -hmm. You can't put him at. So with Del Pitt, it's he has the range, he has the instincts. So you think, oh, you can put him at strong. He's six three. No, free safety, mm -hmm. free safety only. That's his position. 
If he played free safety the whole year, he would probably, to me, would have been the best safety in the draft. All right. <clears throat> Antoine Winfield Jr. That name sounds familiar. <laughs> Cornerback from the Minnesota Vikings. Uh -huh. Long time, right? Yep. Best safety in the draft. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just simple as that. Best well, safety he's got in the, the pedigree. He, I mean, he does. I mean, if he learned anything from his father, mm -hmm. that's how to play football. Okay. That's how to play DB. And he's not a corner. He's straight up safety. Best free safety in the draft. He's not the best free safety that we've seen come out recent years. There's a plenty of other guys that are really good. But he's the best one in this draft in this because draft. of what he can do. And as I said, this is not a really loaded draft for safety, for the safety position. Hence, you haven't really heard much talk about. You're going to hear a lot of chatter about the wide receivers, the linebackers, even defensive end. A little chatter about the corners, but you very rarely hear anyone really hyping up the safeties Nothing. in this upcoming draft. I'm saying like mock drafts are having like maybe one or two guys, mm -hmm. but they should have a third guy, and that's Winfield Jr. because he's a good tackler. He has the range. He's solid in the man-to-man. -man. He has the instinctive. He's a playmaker. He's a free safety. He is everything that you're looking for in a first-round talent safety. And the only thing that holds him back is that he's 5'10". All right. And when we come back after the break, we're going to talk about some of the lesser-known safeties that okay. Draft War has also uh, done his homework on. Yeah. <laughs> We're back, and we're going to pick up where we left off, talking about the underrated safety prospects. And right off the bat, we're going to talk about someone who was mentioned a couple episodes ago, Mr. Kyle Duggar. <laughs> and what school is he from again? Lenoy, and I said Rain the last time. Uh -huh. It's Lenoy Ryan. Okay, all right. Or Rian, or mm -hmm. Ryan. Rain. Ryan, right. something. Mm -hmm. something. Whatever it's called. Um, do we really got to talk about him? Well, I mean, you brought him up as being someone who was underrated, but you've already hit on that point a couple shows ago. So, I mean, I, I think he had a very solid showing, like you said, in the senior bowl. So he's not really much underrated. I think that kind of put him on the spot. Teams are now watching him. And I think he also performed well at the combine. So yeah. he's coming. He's he, coming. He did. And then I watched the tape. The senior bowl, he played good. He, he was good. Against and top competition. Right. So it's like, if I watch the tape, I, I should, I, it's like I shouldn't have even watched the tape, but I did. Mm. <laughs> and uh, obviously I have to. Like, come on now. I'm not, I'm not draft raw if I don't watch the <laughs> tape. Like, come on. But uh, he takes poor angles sometimes. Yeah. Really bad angles when he's yeah. trying to go for the tackle. And, um, but he is a solid tackler when he when doesn't he take does a poor angles. You know, he, he's not... Nobody is breaking away from his tackles. Okay. Uh, then um, he's a hybrid free safety, strong safety guy with solid range. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he's totally bad, but the poor angles, it's just, it's, it's as bad. He's Tony Jefferson is basically what you're saying. Poor angles, good solid guy close at the line of scrimmage, horrible in coverage. Tony Jefferson is not a Tony Jefferson don't have range. I, I would just say. I said horrible in coverage. Kyle Duggar does have some range, though. Right. I, Kyle, he does okay. have some range. He okay. does have some pretty solid okay. range. It's not, it's not totally bad. Right. Okay. It's not. But I was, you know what? I was expecting more. Okay. That's what it was. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm thinking about it now. I was expecting more from well, this Well, again, you know, right coaching, right system. They can take those attributes, all those things, those high points that you talked about, and focus on those. So we'll see. You know, mm -hmm. he's still a young guy. How about uh, Ashton Davis? You know what was crazy is that I actually I was waiting for Ashton Davis to watch the tape because I'm just I was giddy. I'm like, oh mm -hmm. man, we got. I'm like, I gotta see this. And I got to it, and I wasn't say disappointed or anything like that, but 
I think the expectation. I was thinking more. You gave him more hype than you know, what, just what like Kyle Duggar. I was giving more than right. when he probably should. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing: he's still not a bad player. Uh, from what I wrote down from him, he needs to be a consistent tackler. Okay. So that was one thing. You know, tackling for safety is pretty big, but when you're a pure free safety, it's not to me. I don't really care as much. That's why when we if you took, if you watch the episode earlier and I talk about Grant Delpit mm-hmm. and I talk about the missed tackles mm-hmm. and him being a free safety, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter to me if he missed those tackles and yeah. free safety. Yeah. But with Ashton Davis, um, the biggest thing is he doesn't get beat deep. Mm. Okay. He doesn't get beat deep and he's not afraid to blitz and takes on uh, blocks. And what I found out was that he was a former corner. Mm-hmm. So with him being as physical when in terms of taking on blocks and not afraid to blitz, it's kind of weird that he's a former corner, but he has that size that says that, you know, he probably should have been safety from the beginning all anyway. All along. Yeah, so, so he could be a system guy, right system, right fit, yes. where he can really excel. And I, and I, when I said doesn't get beat, I forgot to say, he probably has the best range. Well, that's great. But that's great. Antoine Winfield will be higher than him, mm-hmm. but he's like right there, second best. All so. right. Kayvon Wallace. Kayvon Wallace from Clemson. Mm -hmm. Clemson guy here. Um, High energy, loves to attack, uh, fast going towards line of scrimmage, gambler, can play nickel. There was a lot of stuff to like, but then there was a lot of stuff that you uh, you weren't really sure on. Because of the gambling aspects of his game. And I don't know, he's not like a a pure free safety. He's one of those hybrid nickel safety mm-hmm. type of players. Um, I watched another player earlier, um, and we may not talk about him, but I, I, I'm gonna put him out there. Shaheem Carter from Alabama as well. Uh, he was a safety corner hybrid, mm-hmm. and watching him, I wanted to put him in the safety category, but I couldn't because he plays so much nickel. Yeah. At least I know Kayvon actually plays You know plays that's safety. his position. I, I, and I can tell that's his position, but he does play near the line of scrimmage and plays a lot of nickel to a point where it's not to say I don't like him, but he doesn't have a true position because he's not a strong safety, and you don't see him play a lot of free safety. So it's kind of more of a, like I said, the hybrid. hybrid. Yeah, which you know a lot of the NFL is going to, particularly with the the five back, and also you're bringing the, the dime onto the field. Let's talk about a turf pool. I, this guy, I really had a lot of high hopes for him, watching him all through college. I mean. He kind of fell off. I thought his actually his junior year was a little better. But uh, Antoine Brooks Jr. Okay. <laughs> no, no, we ain't gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. I'm sorry. Um, can I say we on this? Something just sure. real quick. Sure. Just so. Sure. So as I was watching, like I said, watching the later DBs. I was getting pissed off. I was yeah. getting mad. I didn't like it. Uh, whatever. So there's a couple of guys that we're just not even going to talk about at all. But we're going to talk about at least two more of these guys that I probably had bigger high expectations mm-hmm. and they disappointed me like really badly. So what you just said, the Turk, right? Yeah. He gets beat deep. Yeah. He gets beat yes. a lot. And there was times where you saw him near the line of scrimmage because he was a former linebacker turned to safety. And there was nothing that he did to make an impact on the game. And I like impact players. And so when I see his name and I see him on the top of like, in terms of who are the top 10 safeties in yeah. the draft or something like that, or I'm looking at a big boards and he's in the top 100, or I'm looking at just different little websites and just different things to give me a range of where this mm-hmm. guy's being rated from at least the media scouts. Mm-hmm. This ain't it. Yeah. Okay? It, yeah. it ain't it. So I don't want to be so harsh on him, but he needs to get better. He's a strong safety because of his linebacker skills mm-hmm. and then playing safety. But I think that's all he is. It just seems and really. He may not be that guy. He yeah. may just be a solid guy and he ever starts. He may just be solid, but that's nothing else. He will not change it. And being in a linebacker, he he's defense. pretty handsy. He had a lot of penalties. <clears throat> Passing the first, he's, you know, he's very handsy and it just got beat a lot deep, yeah. just like you said. So. And who's this? Uh, this guy Terrell. What's what's his, his name? Escapes me. Oh, Terrell Burgess. Burgess. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Terrell, yeah Burgess. Terrell Burgess. Okay, Utah guy. Man, I was so hyped. I saw Bradley and Nay, the mm-hmm. defensive man, and I was getting, I was getting a little juiced up. I uh, uh, watched tape on linebacker um, Francis Bernard. Mm-hmm. We didn't talk about him in the linebacker uh, segment, segment that we that we did, but 
Uh, the thing about Francis is that I didn't like him as much, but I said, you know what? Terrell Burgess, mm -hmm. yeah, that's going to be the guy. And I turned on that tape and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> man, uh -huh. it was, mm. it was the impact. Mm -hmm. It was crazy because like Kyle Duggar, he showed up at, at the, the senior, senior bowl. bowl. So I'm expecting someone. So is this is someone, you know, you, do you want to have a practice player or you want a game type player? He may be a gamer. He may be those kind of guys that show up game time. It's, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, but the tape is the tape. When I saw the tape, the tape of game time, tape. it was it. <laughs> when I saw the tape of game time, the tape, really the tape. Right. Yeah, the tape so, is the tape. But I would just say this. Um, <clears throat> I think he does have traits. Okay. There's, there's traits that you see. It just, you just want him to kind of bring it all together at some point. And maybe good NFL coaching mm -hmm. and right scheme, he will bring it together. So that's pretty much it when it comes to Terrell Burgess. All right, and that's going to do it for this segment of the show. Again, we want to invite you to take a look at us. We're always going to be here throughout the season in the clutch. We're just getting started here. We're just getting wrapped up. We're going to go deep into the draft. We're going to talk about Ravens' needs. We're going to talk about who we project that may be able to fit in in the upcoming season for our Ravens. And again, we just want to thank you for being and watching and tune in to us on YouTube, Ravens Nation Uncut Sports. You can also find that on Facebook and Draft Raw. What's that station you subscribe to? TV Free Baltimore. They help produce this show. They give us the studio to work in. Check them out. They're pretty good... Uh, good YouTube channel. They do something different when it comes to politics and we do sports, but we're thankful enough that they allow us to do this. So thank you for the people at TV Free Baltimore. And stay tuned after the show to find out where you connect with us as well. Thanks again. We'll see you next week. Tuning into the show in the clutch, you can find us on YouTube at Giraffe Raw. Please sign in and subscribe. Also on Uncut Sports on Facebook. You can also catch us at Ravens Nation as well. And Giraffe Raw, what's that page you subscribe to? Please subscribe to TV Free Baltimore. You can find them on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. And if you want to see more of me, you, you can subscribe to Draft Raw Authentic on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And the opening song is called Bring the Pain. That's by the artist Renard, streaming on all major platforms, specifically Spotify. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>